So now we're going to focus on two experiments. Experiment 14, which is our simple stain, and experiment 15, which is our negative stain. The reason why we do these side by side is because technically they're complementary to each other. One is a simple stain or a direct stain in which we actually stain the actual cell, whereas a negative stain stains the environment instead of the cell itself. So what we want to do is always uh, prepare our smears. So these ones both require some air drying. So really quick, I'm going to set up our tiny drops as we've done before for our smears. Then in the case of the negative stain, I'm actually going to create a slightly larger one right at that edge of where the actual frosting begins and sorry ends and then the rest of the slide begins. Now we still want to transfer aseptically our organism, so I'm gonna set up the actual Bunsen burner. And what we're gonna do is aseptically transfer this into both slides. Now the reason why we do this aseptically is even though sometimes it doesn't call for it is because sometimes other people may be using your sample. So you don't want to contaminate it for them. So we maintain aseptic technique regardless. So after 15 six, uh, seconds have passed, we'll take our organism and we'll take it a couple of times. One smear to let it air dry and I immediately pass it to the other one. Same premise. And once this guy cools down, I'm actually going to add it to the negative one. However, here you'll notice that I'm going to do something a little bit different. Once this guy cools down, same PD technique to close it. We're actually only going to go up and down with this guy. Kind of spread it up as best as we can. Sterilize our loop. And we're done with those samples. Now, what's unique about this is that the simple stain needs to air dry, and so we can wait there for a while as long as there's water, or we can always place these on top of the rack where the wires are. So I'm going to let that sample sit there for a little while, and it'll come back. But the negative stain, on the other hand, needs to air dry with its stain. So there's a unique process while the other one is air drying. We'll take our India ink, and we're gonna add one drop. This guy pours really fast, so we have to be very careful. So one quick drop. I'll close this and clean it for any spills, if anything happens. And then what we're going to do is normally we could use the loop to actually mix it up. Instead, we're actually gonna use the technique that it calls for, which is an extra slide that I already have prepared here. We'll take this, and what you'll do with the other slide is kind of spread it or thin it out. And so I'm gonna kind of mix it in with the slide and then extend it all the way out. So basically I'm kind of thinning it all out. I'm gonna leave that, and that's what needs to air dry. So I'll place this on top of our air dryer. While this one, has to be disinfected because technically it has organisms. So we have a solution up front that will disinfect this for us. So while we wait, we'll pause the program and continue in the next step. So now that we've given the time for the samples to air dry, one of the things you'll probably notice is that the actual look of the negative stain starts kind of looking dried out. There's still a little bit for it to go. The simple stain on the other hand has been put to heat fix on our bench heater. That takes a little bit. So now we have both slides ready to go. Now for the negative stain, I'm gonna to continue to wait for it to air dry completely, or at least most of it. But I wanna start staining my simple stain. So this follows the same protocol as before. We're gonna flood it. So I'm gonna actually prepare it using a little um, hairpin, hair clip over here. We're gonna use methylene blue to do the primary stain. It's a direct stain, so it's going straight to the sample and staining the actual cells. So we'll still carry out the waterfall process, right? So place it over and then pour enough, just enough to actually flood the system. Okay, without wasting too much of that. And we're gonna let this guy sit there for a minute, just like most other stains. Close this guy off, clean it 
as we need. And we'll let that guy sit there with methylene blue. Now once that is done, we'll actually rinse it out and that'll be done. On the other hand, our negative stain, we're not actually gonna rinse it. Instead, we're gonna apply safranin or safranin directly to it also. Let it sit also there for 30 seconds to a minute and then we'll uh, quickly rinse it out with water and then we'll observe both sets of slides under the actual oil immersion. So, as we continue to wait for this guy, we'll start waiting our minute over here and then I already have some water ready to actually rinse it out. And once the minute is over, rinse that guy out, we'll proceed to stain this guy, which should be more or less dry by that point in time. So our direct stain going into the cells, our simple stain, lab 14, it's just a smear, and then one minute worth of methylene blue. That's it, the simplest, hence the term, simple stain. Now that we have that, now that our minute has transpired, the idea is that our cells, whatever we have in here, will turn blue. So to save some water again, I'm gonna use my beaker, rinse it all out. Eventually I'll take care to rinse out everything that I'm using too. And that's about it. So you can let it drip a little bit, that way you're not wanting water everywhere. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll put it into our bibulous paper. Let that guy sit there, press lightly, gently. And we'll make sure that we clean the underside of the slide. Now it's important to keep track of what the top and the bottom is. You don't want to accidentally uh, remove the top side. So while that's happening, it looks like our negative stain is almost fully dry, so I'm gonna start prepping it. And remember, we're gonna add safranin or safranin to it. Same premise as before. One minute, let it sit there, and then we'll wash it too. So in the meanwhile, getting this guy nice and dry, preparing it to stain. Sorry to observe it. And so I'm gonna take some little bit of ethanol and a Kim wipe to make sure I can clean the bottom of it. You'll notice that it looks already stained. You can see where the primary stain went into it. Clean off the bottom, and this guy's ready to observe. Now, while we observe this guy, we can let the other one sit in the safranin, so safranin. Same idea, waterfall it to flood. There you go without wasting too much stain. I'll let that guy sit. We'll close this guy, making sure that we clean it. We don't want anything gripping. You can always have these on paper towels to prevent any other uh, spilling. And these guys are done. So while that guy's sitting for about a minute or so, we can observe this or we can wait for both, rinse that guy out, and then observe them both as needed under oil immersion. So while that guy's getting ready, I'm gonna let this guy sit in my bibulous paper so he can continue to dry out a little bit more and roughly about one minute has passed, then I'll use the rest of my water over here to rinse this guy out. Same idea, waterfall without hitting it directly. We don't wanna accidentally wash out our sample. And then again, taking care to rinse out the bottom of the slide using some ethanol. I still know that this is the top without confusing it. Again, some bibulous paper. I'm gonna put this guy in here. We'll clean up the bottom and we should be able to observe these. So that's combining both 14 for the simple direct stain and then 15, which is the negative or indirect stain in which we stain the environment and look for capsules. You should conclude this by observing this under oil immersion.